And, I, and then I saw, okay, who else? Green, is it Mr. Green, is that, or what is your name? Do you want to type it in? Yeah, unmute. Can you unmute and tell us who you are and what school you go to? I'm Carter Green, and I go to Walter Jackson. Hey, Carter from Walter Jackson. It's so nice okay. for you to join us. And Ethan, you're at which school? I think he's putting it in there. It looks like he's typing it in. That's what I thought. I thought maybe I had the right Ethan in my mind. Ethan bringing on Sheffield. We've got um, Harrington and Cameron, our sixth graders, to answer some questions. Yes, they're brothers. Harper Jane and Reynolds, our sixth graders, going to answer some questions. And then Molly, you're from Leon Sheffield, too. Right? Do we get everybody? Oh, I, do I, I skipped Miriam. Miriam up there in Annabelle's box. Where are you? Whose backyard are y'all in? We're in Shady Park. Shady Park, fun. Okay, so one thing, we are recording this just to have in case um, some could make it timing wise, but they might have questions that come along and we can um, refer them to the recording of this. So we are recording it. I'm sure y'all saw that when y'all signed on. Um, thank you all for taking the time to help us out in the gifted world this afternoon. We appreciate it. And if you are with us from fifth grade, thank you for hopping on and letting us get to know you a little bit. All right, Miss Hill, do you want to? I was going to say, do you want to wait until... 405. Just to give that five minute buffer before sure. we start. Hey, we can do. I was going to say, we can do a quick song trivia. <laughs> So the we just had um, the goose chase class. That's the online scavenger hunt, and we, I'm telling you, there's some competition happening. We're gonna let it. We started it today, and I think we've decided that we're gonna go through next Monday's um, to see who has the most points by next week. So I'm keep getting notifications, and I'm kind of like, oh, I want to get on there and do something so I can jump up on my on the points. We got a few more people join us. Let's see, we've got Zena Roberts. Can you tell us um, what school your students are representing? And let's see. Oh, look at that, Mr. Charman. Hello. All right, so I've got 405 on my clock. Miss Sims, do you have 405? I do. All right, so let me just give you a quick rundown of what we thought, um, of how we thought this could go. Um, but we have a plan, we've got plan A, which we would like to use, but we also have plan B if you guys aren't really wanting to talk. So we have, I'm just going to go through the people who are open to answer questions. And if you're not one of these people, your mic does need to be muted. If you are one of these people, you can leave it on if you don't have a lot of background noise. But if you feel safer muting and unmuting, that works fine, too. Um, so first off, we have Anna Settler. So Anna, could you show us, are you in a position where you can show us your screen so they can see your face? All right, so uh, hi, this is Anna. She's an eighth grader moving into ninth grade. And um, Anna has been involved in lots of things while she was at Decatur Middle. So Anna, what elementary school did you go to? I went to Eastwood. Eastwood. And what are some of the things that you've done just 
So we'll know what your experiences are and what kinds of questions we can ask. What all have you been involved in during your years at Decatur Middle? I've been involved with the SCA first priority, um, the cheer team, soccer team, student council, and then now the Renaissance team, I guess. The Renaissance team is kind of like what student council used to be. Am I right, Anna? Yeah. Yeah. So some leaders, leadership positions. Oh, and project outreach. So Anna's been involved in lots of different things. All right. Thanks, Anna. The next person we have who's available to answer questions, we've got Annabelle. Annabelle, could you wave so we know who? There we go. All right. So Annabelle is a sixth grader. Uh, was there anything in particular that you were involved in this year at Decatur Middle that you wanted to tell us about? Um, I was in, uh, I was going to the FCA meetings and I was in Renaissance team at the same time I also do dance outside. Cool, cool. Thanks, Annabelle. All right, next we've got Harper. Okay, it says Harper Douglas, but she goes by Harper Jane. And um, Harper Jane is the sixth grader. Um, anything that you want to talk about, Harper Jane, that you've been involved in at Decatur Middle? Um, basically the same as Annabelle. I was in Renaissance team and FCA first priority, which is really fun. Okay. Great, great. And not all of us are involved in stuff. Uh, if I had been asked this question as a middle schooler, I would have had nothing, nothing. And so it's okay um, if you don't yet have anything to um, tell us about. Your experiences alone offer a wealth of information. All right, so Cameron, are you at a spot where you can show us your face so everybody can know what you look like? Hey. <laughs> Notice anything about Cameron and Carrington? <laughs> Cameron, uh, would you like to um, tell us anything that you know a lot about now that you've been um, at Decatur Middle for a year? <laughs> All right, so, um, I've been in band. Um, they're trying to separate them so that they can. That's okay. We had some band questions, so that's going to be super useful. Okay. okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. Okay. He, has, he has some feedback because they have two laptops set up. Oh, uh, that's uh, okay. There we go. All right. Go ahead, Cameron. All right. Um, I'm in band and I. Oh yeah. Um. I was a manager for football and uh, basketball, and, and I'm in gifted reading yeah. for one semester. Cool. Thanks, Cameron. Terry, right. same question for you, buddy. Anything that you feel like is an area of expertise or an experience that you're going to love to talk about? I'm getting this mic set up. Don't you love his glasses? I do. I do too. And while they're figuring that out, um, and it's okay if Carrington, oh, there he goes, Carrington. What, uh, what's the question again? Is there anything that you feel like you um, have an area of expertise, like Cameron said band, others said Renaissance team, maybe you just know a whole lot about open walkers. <laughs> Those are important questions as we move to middle school. So, uh, like Cameron said, I was uh, he was the manager, and uh, I was I was the uh, manager too for the basketball and football team, and uh, and <laughs> so somebody's got the giggle. He does. He does. <laughs> All right, Cam uh, Carrington. If you think of anything else you want to share, you can just unmute in a minute. <laughs> Um, all right, Reynolds, you'll be our last person to kind of introduce themselves. Anything in particular you were involved in or you feel like you have an area of expertise in? Um, well, I was in first priority and FCA, and I just recently tried out for the cheer team and made it. And that's 
Awesome. So it sounds like we have lots of different things represented. Uh, we have a great wealth of information and advice that these student volunteers can offer you guys. So I was talking earlier about plan A versus plan B. So plan A would be for me, for Ms. Sims and I to say, all right, guys, so what questions do you have? And then you could just jump in with your questions. But if you don't feel quite comfortable doing that, we can go to plan B. And so plan B is where I have a list of questions that um, some of our fifth graders have come up with. And our sixth graders may have some just ideas that they're, oh, I wish I had known this before I went to middle school. So we can just facilitate discussion like that. So we'll try plan A and we'll say, so fifth graders, do you guys have any questions? And if it doesn't work, we'll go to B from there. All right, Ms. Sims, did you want to say anything? No, that's exactly what I had in mind, so we'll see where we go. Right. Hey, before we get to questions, uh, we also have with us Ms. Rennick, who she's probably the gifted teacher for some of you guys. Thank you for being here, Ms. Rennick. And we also have Ms. Flyshower. She's got her Bitmoji put up there. She is the gifted teacher, or one of the gifted teachers, over at Austin Middle School. So. Um, and I would like to say, since I did it before, I'm Miss Sims. I teach the sixth and seventh grade um, gifted elective classes, and my students that I oversee are sixth and seventh graders, the ones that don't take our electives, which you'll find out more about that. And I've just been prattling on like we've been best friends forever. I'm Miss Hill, and this year I taught eighth graders, and I had a handful of sixth graders. So I see some of my students in here too. All right, so let's get started um, with questions that you may have. Do we have anybody who's going to volunteer as tribute to ask our first question? So here's one of the questions that our students gave to us. Um, who will our teachers be? Of course, we've already answered that. Ms. Hill and Ms. Ben. So um, here's a question kind of along the same lines about teachers. One student asked, will we have the same teacher? So maybe some of you could shed some light on how classes went this year. Like, how did all that go? Annabelle, was that your hand up? You want to talk for that one? Sure. Um, so normally, so you have seven periods in the day, and you're going to have teachers for each period most of the time. And so normally, I had gifted for fourth period. Mm -hmm. So I had two class, or three classes before. Um, and you're just going to you're gonna have different teachers, and not every gifted student will have the same teacher. Um, so, yeah, because I have Miss Hill and the we were her only sixth grade class, but this is it. Yeah, very good. So here's a question that kind of stems from that. Um, where do you put all your stuff? If you're moving from classroom to classroom, what do you do with all your stuff? Uh, Cameron, I see your hand. All right, so I think you have like, Four minutes in between classes, and Four then minutes. go to your locker and visit your locker. Do you have to have a locker? Anna, do you have to have a locker? No, ma'am. Hey, Karen. as an eighth grader, do you have one? I did not. Well, I had one. I had a big old locker in the um. <laughs> For people, like for all my cheer stuff and, and soccer stuff, but I have one for like the books. Okay, so sixth graders, that first day when you went in, how easy or difficult? Oh, I'm sorry, missed him. Um, yeah, I want I want Cameron or Carrington to unmute their mic uh, simply because going back to that first question, do we have the same teachers? Both Cameron and Carrington had, um, they're one of the, so 
our handful of gifted students that had kind of a different situation set up where they had it one semester versus the entire okay. year. So um, Cameron, when you said gifted reading, um, can you explain what that is? And we'll let somebody else explain what the gifted explorations were, was. We can kind of help them. All right, so um, gifted reading, uh, it was, um, okay, in my class, all we did was pretty much read and take a yard test. And then we did a book bento project. And then sometimes went inside the makerspace. And then pretty much after that, we did nothing. So how long did you have my class? We did nothing. How For long? the first semester. For only one semester. So I had Cameron the first semester and then Carrington looked like he was going to want to say something. And you're welcome, Carrington, to turn on your mic or you can walk over to Cameron's camera either way. But Carrington, did you want to say anything about your second semester? Um, they're echoing it. It was fine. So um, Cameron, I, I'll kind of okay so they both had me one semester and where Annabelle like like she said had the, us the whole year who is that um so for our gifted explorations class which all of our sixth graders we try to get into our class um Every now and then we have a handful of students that will have us for the gifted reading portion, which um, all of our gifted sixth graders have. And, but sometimes we have a handful where it doesn't work in their schedule and they, you might have it one semester. Ms. Hill, back to I you. Didn't know you were oh, I am sorry. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. So, like thinking about that, you're you're you have the opportunity to change up your schedule um, if you take a one semester class. So you get a new class that second semester. But one of our questions that were that was submitted by a fifth grade student is, is it fun switching class classes for every subject? Um, Reynolds, we haven't heard from you yet. What did you think about switching classes for every subject versus what it was like in elementary school? You had the same teacher all day except for specials. Um, I thought it was pretty fun because you kind of, like some teachers can be more strict than others. And like, I wouldn't want to have like one teacher for like three of my classes if they're one of the more strict ones. And it was really fun to like have different people in your classes so you could get to know more people than just those 24 people in one of those classes. So I thought it was pretty fun. That's cool. So being new in the school and Decatur Middle School is pretty big. Um, Harper Jane, did you think that it was difficult to try to get around and navigate? And especially with that four minutes, did you ever have to go from one side of the building all the way to the other side of the building? Um, my schedule was pretty hectic because I started here and then I would go all the way down. Then I would come all the way back up and I'd go all the way back down. But you really shouldn't be worried the first few weeks because, I mean, they really didn't count any tardy. So it was like you're just trying to figure out your your schedule and pause just a second you said a word that some of us may be unfamiliar with ethan this one is i'm going to come back to you harper jane yeah this one is specific ethan for decatur middle school we have one scheduled next week for austin middle school but you're welcome to stay um some of these things will apply to austin middle too um, but some things are going to be different. So you are more than welcome to stay with us. But if you feel like you'd rather just tap out and um, try again next week, that's okay too. So Harper Jane, you mentioned a word that we may not be familiar with, a tardy. What is that? Um, tardy is when you are late to uh, basically any class and um, then normally they um, 
like some teachers they make you like they might make you like sign the book or I don't know uh, I wasn't really tardy um so I don't really know the process um I know it wasn't really a problem because I know I was tardy once to actually Miss Hill's class and it, it was completely fine because she really understood that it's very hard to go from one place to another, especially when they're really tall eighth graders and seventh graders just towering down on you and you can't stop them. From yeah, I'm, all my classes were upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. So a lot of my teachers, I would just try to like book it to all my classes, but most of my teachers were pretty understanding. If I was like thirty seconds late after the bell, um, but normally you, it's not switching classes that is that nerve wracking. It's like the like stressing out about getting to class because I used to stress out about getting to class on time and then I'd be there like two minutes early, so. So, um, fifth graders, do you guys have any specific questions about classes and teachers before we start talking about things like the cafeteria and um, gym time? So, fifth graders, unmute if you have a question or you can type it in the chat box. We'll take just a second or two. And before we leave that topic, um, our guest speakers, is there anything about classes and teachers um, that you want to address? Let's see, we did have um, a question pop up. Giovanni, did I say that right? Awesome. All right, Giovanni asks, will we have the same teachers? We've kind of already touched on that, but let's just talk about it again. It'll be good to hear again. Does anybody different want to um, take and kind of explain that one? Anna, why don't you talk about that one for me? Um, you'll have a different teacher for each of your classes, each of your four core, and then um, your two electives and your PE teacher. So, so how many teachers overlap, but most of the time that doesn't happen. So how many teachers total do you have in the course of a day? Seven. Did you answer? I didn't hear you. Seven. Seven. I'm sorry. I'm staring here like, I'm waiting. Yeah, so seven different teachers. Um, Anna, have you ever had the same teacher for more than one year? Yes, ma'am. Was that like I a... Had, I had Miss A. Hill twice, and then seventh grade, I had her twice a day. Uh, so some teachers have offered more than one type of class. Like, um, I know we have an eighth grade teacher who teaches language arts, but he also teaches like some media classes. So it's possible that you can have that teacher twice. Um, she mentioned Miss A. Hill. Miss A. Hill was the gifted teacher before um, Miss Sims and I moved over there. And um, she had her and I had Miss A. Hill for, what did you say, sixth grade and seventh grade? Yes, ma'am. I had sixth grade explorations and then whatever seventh grade was, I guess future city. I don't remember. And yeah. oh, it's cool. Cool. All right. So if our fifth graders don't have any questions, let's talk about the thing that scared me the most. Now, this last this school year was my first year in middle school in like nine years. And I was really nervous about the cafeteria. I mean, of all things to be nervous about, like I should have been nervous about all sorts of other things, but it was like this one little thing that I was like, okay, where am I going to sit? Who am I going to sit with? What am I supposed to do? Which line do I go in? How am I going to hear in there? Like, ooh, there were so many things stressing me out about the cafeteria. So there are these things that I'm sure you guys are going to touch on today that I wish I had known. So, um, 
let's kind of do this a little bit different. Uh, sixth graders and Anna, do you guys want to give us a rundown of what it's like in the cafeteria, the lunches? Should we uh, do you bring your lunch? Do you eat in the cafeteria? and your class walks in there, you just go sit down. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. So was there ever a time that you got to sit anywhere that you wanted to, or are you always sitting at your tables? There was one time Mr. Ferguson let us sit wherever we wanted to, and that's the only time. Then other than that, we sat at our tables. So you're always sitting, like Reynolds said, with the people from your class. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Oh, let's see. Harper Jane, we haven't heard from you in a minute. Harper Jane, how loud does it get in the cafeteria? It, 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 it's very loud. <laughs> but, um, when, I mean, like, this really didn't, uh, like, it was about, like, one time where they told us to, like, tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But there's not just one session of lunch. Like, it's not just everyone in the whole school has a lunch. So there's first lunch, second lunch, and third lunch. And um, I was third lunch. We got lucky for third lunch. So um, we would have to wait until the last, like, 30, 20 minutes of class. And then the people who were in first lunch, they would just go straight to the lunchroom. Like, I don't think that they would go to the classroom. And wait a minute. So they would just have their like backpacks and stuff with them and take them into the lunchroom. They might have dropped them off. I I, I don't know. I was in first lunch, so. But you were last lunch, so did you take your stuff with you then? Yes. So sometimes you'll have to take your your belongings with you, your big old honking backpack, and pop it in the floor. Yeah. Is there anything else about the cafeteria or lunchtime that we need to talk about? Ms. Stanton, would you like to take the reins? Are there any questions that you saw on that spreadsheet that you think we need to talk about? Um, yes, uh, there are a couple. So just to make sure to go back to how is gifted reading different from other reading classes? Um, Good question. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah. 
gifted reading versus like other reading classes? Is that the question, right? It, it's gift, how is different the gifted reading different from other reading classes? So all sixth graders are required to take a reading course. Um, that's to begin with. Now, and historically, you might want to explain how this was set up for our students. So when you come into sixth grade, it's automatic that you're going to be put into a reading class. So every sixth grader is a reading class. But for you as a gifted student, you're going to take a reading class with the gifted teacher. And that way we can, man, we can do a myriad of things or lots of different things. We can select a book that is geared towards our gifted students, hi Corian, geared towards our own particular students that um, talks about their asynchronous development. Do you guys remember asynchronous development is like being really, really intelligent and really smart, but you act your age and sometimes people don't get that. Like, hello, you're still 11, but you can think really smart. So our book talks would revolve around that. Um, we can sometimes move at a faster pace and we can offer things that appeal to the different types of giftedness that you have. Um, and that might not be what you find in the other classroom, but sometimes it is. But the key thing is that then you're getting to be with your intellectual um, peers. You're getting to be with other gifted students and a gifted teacher who understands the way you think the way you do things and the why behind the things that you are doing. Um, so it just, Miss um, Sims, you're going to say something. Well, and two, a lot of times that gives us the flexibility to have a smaller group so that our conversations um, and projects, different things can be very specific to your interest. That's right. That's right. So um, in addition to gifted reading, you can also choose to take gifted at exploration and so sometimes we combine the two and you're just in there for a year and sometimes like with Harrington and Cameron they were just in there for a semester so they just have gifted reading but I know Annabelle and Harper Jane and Reynolds they all have the gifted reading and gifted exploration together so they were in there for a year so I know my students did all sorts of different projects um, they organized a school-wide book drive and the books are still sitting in the <laughs> the room because Corona, um, a book drive and they did video competitions and just things that they're interested in. Um, and, you know, just exploring those things. I want to add to that. Um, and Cameron, you can go ahead and be cutting, turning your microphone on for me if you don't mind. Um, and I'm picking on Cameron specifically for this one because he was with me first semester, so we kind of learned our classroom in our area together. This is my first year at, this was my first year at Decatur Middle as well. Um, another thing that we try to do with our time is give you, allow y'all time in the makerspace. Cameron, you mentioned makerspace. We were housed this year, our classroom this year was in the same, it was in the library where our makerspace is housed. Cameron, can you explain what that is? and how that works for us. The maker space is an area where you can like, if you like take AR stuff and stuff, well, well, no, you can get free Friday, I guess. And then you can take AR tests or go down to the maker space, which is in the library below. And then you can take out objects and then play with them like the 3D doodler. That's pretty much what I did the whole time. And I made a basketball and stuff. And then, you got some Harry Potter stuff down there too. So Cameron, your reading project, I think that's where you were going with it. Were you able to utilize the makerspace to make um, different pieces for your reading projects? <laughs> okay. Um, so we do have the makerspace that, for our gifted students. And Miss Hill, one thing about our the you all that take our gifted electives, we have more resources on top of that. In, for our gifted students. So um, that's another great reason that to that you're in our classes because you we are your resource as your gifted teachers, but you also have lots of tools um, specifically for you guys and girls um, that are identified as gifted that you can use. 
Miss Hill, I think I did see another one. Um, let's it. It's I have, not I have one that I know. What, I'm going to highlight the one that I wanted to end on. Okay. The there was a general one, and it may be that we need to get a one from a female input from female and one from a male. What is Jim like clothes wise? Um, Reynolds and Carrington, y'all want to take that? We'll hear for the girls and the guys. You can go for it. There you go. There you go. So, so you have to wear like certain clothes, like gym clothes and stuff, and um, and certain shoes. But, but if you don't. Do you get in trouble for not dressing out? Carrington? Do you get in trouble for not dressing out? And then Can you hear me? Penalized. Penalized. So have you do you have to change out every day, Carrington? Carrington Bell. Do you have to change out every day? I don't know if you heard me. My stuff is fine. All right, all right, it's good, it's good now. Okay. So. Reynolds, you want to go ahead and start telling us about the girls while he's getting situated? Sure. Well, we definitely started at the beginning of class to dress out. And when you dress out, it's normally towards your grade. And it, like, if you don't dress out, then you get, like, points taken off for that day. And um, you normally have to wear like athletic pants or shorts, tennis shoes, and your gym shirt. And um, you normally like at the end of like the third semester, like getting to Christmas, we kind of stop dressing out. So like we really didn't dress out that often, and it was it's not as like stressful as it sounds. Good answer, both of you. Carrie, to what I heard, you also had a good answer. You do need to dress out or you do get penalized. And like Reynolds said, points taken off. Was that, did that cover everything for the gym clothes? I think, I think it did. It sounds like it. So um, looking just to make sure we covered all of these, will we still do robots? So going back to the maker space, yes, that's um, an opportunity for you to use, uh, work with those, explore those and um, use as needed for projects. And will y'all find us? Will y'all help us find our classes on the first hold day? Hold on, rewind right there. There's also, um, as far as robots go, one really cool thing about middle school and high school is that, well, particularly middle school, is that you can take an elective that's called robotics. So if robots are your thing, then you can enroll in, a ro in robotics as early as sixth grade. I know that um, Harper Jane in particular took robotics. I'm not sure about Annabelle and Reynolds, um, but I know a lot of my gifted eighth graders were in robotics um, and then competitive robotics. So that's where there are options for that outside of that too. I took robotics um, this year and it was a lot of fun. We got to do some challenges, but you do not need to think it's easy because it is not. You are challenged every <laughs> single day, but it's still a lot of fun. This Miss Thrower is one of the nicest teachers I, teachers I have, and she makes the challenges really easy to understand, and it's really fun. So, Miss, she mentioned Miss Thrower, one of the robotics teachers. We, and Miss Hellebrand is the other robotics teachers. We try to work together with, uh, with the STEM, STEAM teachers specifically because they are also electives, and a lot of our um, gifted students like some of these areas. And one thing I can tell you about these robot, uh, those STEAM electives at school is they are tough. I agree with that. Um, and I have found, I've seen many, uh, towards the end of our year, many of the, a lot of competitive robotics students who I didn't have in class, but they were gifted students, come and run into me trying to get help and resources for their competitions. So they do compete and um, if, it's very much 
for those who are interested in that field. So we, we have a question that Ms. is gonna get to, but I wanna rewind just a little bit further. Um, the question was, when will we get our schedule for sixth grade? Now, traditionally that happens um, in the you know very last part of summer you'll get they'll have it there will be a day where you get to go up to the school and get your schedule and you can even practice unlocking your locker you can um, look up and down the halls but you know guys we don't know what things are going to look like come august so we're all just going to wing it but everybody is very kind and gracious and understanding about sixth grade in terms of your schedules and memorizing it or losing your paper or forgetting where you're going or even showing up in the wrong classroom, which I myself as a student have done. Um, but there are teachers out in the hallway who will help get you where you, to where you need to go. Um, if you have a teacher's name, a classroom number, we can help you with that and definitely will. But in addition to the days where you come and pick up your schedule, there are there's a night where you get to come before school starts and you get to walk through your schedule, meet your teachers and talk to them and your parents or guardians get to talk and meet with your teachers as well. You'll also get to see other students that you'll have in that class so that on the first day of school, you're not just being thrown in there and you don't know what's going on. No, we try our best to prepare you, but keeping in mind that none of us know how August is going to look. So, I'm so I, and I just took over your question that you were going to talk about, Miss <laughs> Ann. All right. Um, <laughs> well, not really. You didn't. Was it the one I have highlighted in on the page? Okay. Yeah. So, will y'all help us find? our classes on the first day um yes and it's not when i say yes to that that is everybody you see on the screen that is oh no not not happening what what it's okay, my dog alert y'all in my back sorry my dog's walk around and look for it okay um i'm sorry so yes did y'all hear any of the answer at all Okay, so to the answer, <laughs> will y'all uh, help us find our classes on the first day? The answer, it's simple, yes. When I say yes, that's not just the people you see on the screen, the sixth graders, that, that includes um, teachers, but also anybody in the building. You, Reynolds, since you have your mic on, how is that first day? for everybody, um, no matter well, what grade, looking for classes? Well, I was terrified to find my classes because I was scared that I was going to like walk into their own class or something. So I like kind of out a little bit to get like, um, the schedule on it. And I like would like talk it out after my first class and like make sure I know where I'm going. And like after the first day, it's really easy and like I didn't even have to use like any help or anything after like the first two days. So it like it's scary on the first day, but like once you realize that it's not that hard, then it becomes a lot more normal. Thank you. I was going to say, like Miss Sim said, uh, the first day is new for everyone. So you're not going to be the only person trying to navigate on that first day. So um, we're going to wrap up pretty soon within the next few minutes because we're about 45 minutes in. So um, fifth graders and fifth graders have been dropping out. Do you guys have any questions in particular, anything that we still haven't answered? We have one last question that I want to know, especially from Anna. <laughs> So, fifth graders, anything y'all want to ask? All right, so my question, and I want everybody to answer it. Anna, uh, Anna Annabelle, Harper Jane, Cameron, Harrington, and um, Reynolds. 
The question came from a student, and I thought it was so fitting for middle school. Is it as bad as they say it is? Is it as scary as it's all worked up to be? It's middle school. Is it really as bad as it's rumored to be? Which no. thing? And I, I think it is bad, but it's not scary. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's not like it's that hard. All right, Annabelle. Oh. I'm sorry, Anna. And teachers aren't mean. It's just, I don't know. I worked really hard to be mean. <laughs> it's like awkward years, too. <laughs> it is, it is. Annabelle, what do you think? Um, it's not, so especially sixth grade, it's not. I was really nervous on the first day. But it really is not that bad. The first day is kind of scary, but from then on, you just get used to it, and it's a lot easier than, like, everyone says it's going to be. Harper Jane, what did you think? It is not scary. I mean, I've watched a ton of movies before. Like, you know, all those movies, and they say how middle school is so bad, and, like, you have to fit in. Like, it's not that. It's not really that hard, and you just got to get used to it. Um, sixth grade, you don't – I like to get involved. And um, it's like you don't really get involved then. But seventh grade and eighth grade, you will find your thing. You know, you're trying everything out. You know, it's really, it's really, it's really fun, different and fun. All right, Cameron, Harrington. Uh, I wasn't scared on the first day of school. Um, yeah, it's, it's not that bad. It's school. <laughs> Cameron? Uh, I wasn't really scared or nothing, but I did run into a lot of fights in the hallway. But... But, but that's all, I guess. And Sometimes you, that happens in middle school. Yeah. yeah. All right. And Reynolds, what did you think? Was it as bad? Um, you it was like, I feel never I think it was like not easy, but it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Because, like, you really get to start getting involved with stuff in seventh grade. Like, you can start trying out for all the teams and stuff so like you don't have everything on your plate in sixth grade and it's a lot less stressful than people say it is well good 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 um this has been so much fun thanks to everyone who came and you know what I want to weigh in on that because I've been in elementary school for years and I was nervous I was nervous about a lot of things going to middle school and it's not as bad as they say it is I enjoyed getting to know other students other teachers um, just a tremendous amount of fun this year so um, if anybody, it's great. If uh, well, actually, if anybody wants to stay around and ask a question, just you know, in a smaller uh, group setting, Miss Sims and I will hang out in the chat for just a few more minutes. Um, special thanks to you guys who volunteered to answer questions. We appreciate it so much. And fifth graders, we are so excited that you could join us for this Q and A session. And if you think of any additional questions that you have, I know that I have some students who would be more than happy to answer some questions so you could email them to us, Ms. Sims or I, or Ms. Sims or me, you can email them to your current gifted teacher and um, they'll get them where they should go. So thank you I so much. Okay, if you're a mom. Oh, well, cool, cool. I want to add to um, fifth grade, we're looking forward to meeting you, but sixth grade and um, sixth grade and Anna. Thank y'all so much. Y'all did a great job for uh, for the amount of time y'all had noticed and y'all did not know what questions were going to be thrown your way. So um, we appreciate you.
so much, so much. All right, all right. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys hopefully at some of our gift classes, the gift gathering. And look for a link. <laughs> look for a link to a video of some of these points, um, pointers that they're giving you. There, there may yeah. be some more that they mentioned that we haven't in here. So. Adios. Adios. Olga. Miss everybody. Bye, everybody. Congratulations, Molly. Um, while we're sitting on here, I'm trying to. You know, oh, she got it on. You deserve. Um, I turned on her mic, so, so I was going to tell her. <laughs> Ms. Hill, since it's recording, it's going to send us a transcript. That's why I started typing in these answers. I love that you did that. That was perfect. So can we go just while we're sitting here for a second? Can we stop recording for a minute? I need to tell you something before I leave. Um, or you got some well, just in say. case we need something written on here and want it recorded. Janelle, do you think, is there anything you could think of I need to add to this chat before we stop recording? No, you handle that perfectly. I'm so glad you got to do that soon. Okay, so I am, if I could figure out how to, I'm going to stop recording. Wait, there it is. I hate how that menu goes away. I know. Oh, wait. Is Mary Sue really there or is she just hanging out? Oh, hello. There it went. Wait, is it just one, two, three? Mary Sue is also here? Yeah. I'm here. Uh, I've been working on other stuff while I've been listening. Okay, so yes, Johnny. Janelle, did you read my text? No. Daphne texted me while y'all were over to tell me that she had just gotten an email from Lynette about sending the thing, like at 3.30. I said, well, she said, I think y'all are already in this meeting.